بعد last hadith took us like around 90 minutes so I try my best even though like this hadith is really deep in the meaning I try my best to make it like shortening to do 30 minutes inshallah so before we start with this hadith I should ask again about the hadith just to be sure like everyone knows the hadith so Am was late so how many kinds of hadith Am we have? I'm just kidding. Thank you. Thank you. So, how many hadith? The kinds of hadith? Hadith mutawatir. Yes. Mashur. Mashur. Ahad. Ahad. Then ahad is sahih. Okay. So, what, what, what do you like? When you say mutawatir, what do you mean by mutawatir? Check out the Rahman. The came more than one way. Uh, there is no possibility that the Prophet doesn't say that. <laughs> so it never comes to our mind that the Prophet doesn't say this hadith because a lot of people say no, the same thing hadith. about the Prophet. So they can't like be all together to, to do the same lie. And Mashur? Anyone? What's Mashur? Three, four. Three, four people? So each one confirmed the other one. So we have like three, four sources that the Prophet ﷺ said this hadith. There is possibility that the Prophet ﷺ doesn't say this hadith, but it's very like less than the other hadiths. So they call it mashhur, like famous. Everyone knows that the Prophet ﷺ said this hadith. And there is ahad. We said ahad means wahid by wahid, which means wahid means one in the Arabic language. So when you put all wahid together, they call ahad. And this could be sahih, could be hasan, could be weak. Sahih, authentic, <coughs> hasan between like weak and authentic. And when we say authentic, that depends on the people who narrated these hadith. Each one should be trustful truthful with a good memorization. If his memorization is not good, the hadith will be less than the sahih. So this is the method of the Hanif. They said the hadith is three kinds. Mutawatir, Mashur, Ahad. Anyone else, they said no, the hadith is two. Only mutawatir and ahad. And they put the mashur part of the ahad. And the reason, the reason they, they said this, they said because like whether it's there is possibility or there is no possibility. And when we say mashur, still your mind give you an idea that there's a possible way to change this hadith on behalf of the Prophet or even to fabricate the hadith. But it's really less. This is a strong hadith, but we don't say there is no possibility. So they have two kinds. Mutawatir, ahad, mashhur is part of the ahad. So now, we will go back to the hadith. This hadith that I choose tonight, the scholars, they said, it's one of the rules of Islam. They said it's very important. <coughs> you remember when I talked about Inna al-A'malu bin Niyat? And I said it's a very important hadith that some people, they said it's half of the religion. This hadith, they said it's the other half. Because I said there is some conditions to have your a'mal, your deeds, accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyone knows what these conditions? If you want to like have your a'mal accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to ensure you have ikhlas, a good need for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
and your amal is muwafiq li shara'illah on the method that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. So two things. Hmm? You have to go Muslim first, right? Chef, it's like, because you have, you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so you have ikhlas to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you worship Allah, you, you do all all things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is like Islam for sure. You're saying it's for uh, the, the, deeds, it's for, the deeds to be accepted is to be a Muslim after that. No, no, the, these like, these, the conditions of like, mukhatab, it had to, to be mukhatab in the shah. Like if you have no aql, if you are majnoon, this is a different story. And if you are a kid, this is also a different story. So conditions for a'mal not related to no, the one who do it. But for what I'm saying is here is like for somebody who like very, very charitable for example, it's yeah, that, somebody who actually go, he's not a Muslim, he doesn't believe he's a murfid, he doesn't believe in that's that. That's exactly what we said like last time. We said if you do something not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why you ex expect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reward you for something else? And we confirmed this. Like I, I, I even gave an example. I said like, if someone go and walk to my neighbor house and he comes asking for money, I would say like, why? You should go to him and ask for your rewards, right? So same thing, like people, they do it to be famous, to be like well known in their community, to be like whatever. They want to be good, and everyone knows them as like good people. So they they don't do it for the sake of Allah. Why they go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for the rewards? That they, they don't it never comes to their mind. Because I, I said there are some people, Muslim people, they said, Oh, like this guy, he spent that much for like poor people. You and you would say like he's not Muslim, he will go like he will never enter Jannah. I would say he didn't do it for the sake of Allah. So why you like think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him for something he didn't do it for his sake? So this is like absolutely confirmed in Sharia. So now there is two conditions for having a'mal deeds accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One is will be inside about your knee, about your intention. And we talked about this in the hadith, إِنَّمَ الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Because this judge, this part, from the inside, from the ikhlas, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other hadith, judge the a'mal from outside. How the amal should be, to be accepted. And we said it should be on the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't create it something and add it to the sharia. So this hadith, narrated by Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala And she said, Man ahdatha fi, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man ahdatha fi amrina hadha, ma laysa minhu, fahuwa rad. Whoever created something in our matter, that's meaning our religion, ma laysa minhu, something is not, from the religion, it's rejected on him. So, we start with the reporter of the hadith, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala. And everyone knows Aisha is the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anyone knows like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, first he, he married to Khadija, right? So, when, when he married Aisha in between his wives? Third one. Third one, that's perfect. He married to Aisha, he was married to Aisha on the second year after the Hijrah, and she was the third wife to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After Khadija and so on. So, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was married to Aisha in the second year after the Hijrah. And she was the only big that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been married. She's the only uh, virgin that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to marry. And she was 
really a good in 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 knowledge. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, radiallahu ta'ala, one of the greatest Sahaba, he said, if we need to ask about the knowledge, we go to Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala, and we ask. And there is a good reason for that. She was young when the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, married her. And she memorized the hadiths from the Prophet ﷺ. Not even this. She dealt with the Prophet ﷺ with the daily life. So she knows how the Prophet ﷺ used to do and what he used not to do. So she kept this in her mind. And whenever she have been asked about what the Prophet ﷺ, she has the answer right away. So the Sahaba, they used to go and ask for the knowledge from Aisha radiallahu ta'ala. But you will find in, in, in the hadith books, because she's wife of the Prophet sallallahu and he has many wives, she was jealous and she like, she acts sometimes in, in, in a way of how the wives like do when they are really jealous. Like once she throw the, the, the food and the dish and the Prophet sallallahu he wasn't really like angry about her. He's just like, Ina would be Ina wa ta'am bi ta'am. Like, dish instead what you like broke and a ta'am, a food, you have to bring a food to the other wife. So, subhanAllah, even even the, the Prophet sallallahu when he deals with his wives, he, he was like, <coughs> really deals with, with them. And if, if you find, if you actually see the the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will realize that very clear. Like once, and he was like really, really smart when he deals with them. Once he, he, he found uh, Safiya bin Tuhayy crying. And she's, she used to be a, a Jewish, her father is like the leader of the Jew people. So she said, when he asked her about like why you are crying, she said, like, because they said, oh, son, oh, daughter of a Jew, Ibn al Yahudi. And then the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, like, why you are crying? Your father is a prophet, and your uncle is a prophet, and your husband is a prophet. And then she became, like, really enjoyed what the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, told her. And she became, like, really saying to the to the other wives, oh, my father is a prophet. And now it's like, they used to call her name like a daughter of a Jew. But now I said, no, my father is a prophet. And the Prophet Sallallahu meant Harun, and her uncle is Musa, and her husband is the Prophet Sallallahu So he doesn't say like, oh, why you tell this to uh, Safiya? Why you do this? And he doesn't go and like, beat his wives. He said, like, why you are crying? You shouldn't cry. You should be, like, really feeling the honor of your inheritance. Because your father is a prophet, your uncle is a prophet, your husband is a prophet. No one get this honor except you. So, subhanAllah, this is how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to deal with his wives. So, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was really knowledgeable person in hadith and in sharia as well. So she reported this hadith. And we, when we take this hadith and we talk about this hadith, we will find out it's a really a deep hadith. That's why the scholars, they said it's from Usul al-Din, it's from, from the base of this religion. And they talk about this hadith with honor. They said, with this hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects this religion from any addition or any ziyada. Anything can make, add to this hadith. So, first of all, man ahdath, that's mean whoever created something, add to this religion. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
has completed this village. No one can add to it anything, even if he thinks it's good. And fi amrina in our matter and in our religion, ma laysa minhu something not a part of it, fa huwa rad, it's rejected only. So three conditions. To create something is not comes from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't come from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and it's not supported, this is the second thing it's not supported by any things, any commands come from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and it's supposed to be in religion not from the adat like for example to do something never comes on on the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but it's not in, from the religion like for example having cars they used to like ride camels and horses so no one said like oh this is not acceptable because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never like drove a car so like when he ride a camel this is nothing related to the Sharia even the way of like addressing, the way of like uh, the Prophet Sallallahu used to deal with in the daily life, it's not related to this hadith. So this hadith related to the Sharia, because he said fi amrina hada in our matter. And there is another narration for this hadith: man amala amala, whoever does some actions or one action is not from our religion so now everything has these three conditions it's never have been done in Islam it's in Sharia ah, not in everything else and it's not supported by anything in Islam it's rejected and they call it what they call Shafam what they call it if one created something? Bid'ah. Bid'ah. And we all know because now everything is bid'ah. People just like, oh, this is bid'ah, this is bid'ah, this is bid'ah. And they don't know even what is bid'ah. Bid'ah is when you created something. It's not part of Islam. And it's not supported. Or it goes under some general rule of Islam because the hadith says من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه whoever does something in you it's not a part of our religion and from the مفهوم المخالفة which means the other meaning anyone knows مفهوم المخالفة by the way in Arabic and this is like big debate because <laughs> Mafhum al it means like when, for example, if I order you to, like, okay, um, could you bring me uh, a cold cup of water? If you go, that you should bring me cold cup of water. What if you bring me a water which is not cold? Does that mean I will accept it? That's mean like only that what I want. Yes. So that they call it mafhum al-mukhala. And not all the scholars agree with this because that means to have the opposite of the hukm, of the rule to the opposite story. Like for example, if I say, if the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever created something not from our religion. That's mean if you created something it, not in religion, it's accepted. Or it depends. It's not mentioned in the hadith. So the Hanati Madhab, they said, we don't accept Mafum al because it's not saying of the Prophet wasallam. It's something we are assuming. Some of them, and the other scholars, they said we accept it because it's the other meaning of the hadith. Okay. It's a little bit, this is in Usul al-Fiqh. So this is a little bit 
you have yeah it's, it's not complicated it's very easy but but you need to think about it now when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa min whoever created something not from our religion so if he created something from our religion that means it's accepted right so this is the other meaning that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doesn't say they call it mafhum al mukhalaf they call it the other meaning so now we know from this hadith two things whoever created something not from the religion it's rejected and if he created something from the religion it's accepted two meanings one that the prophet sallam said it which is we call it mantuq and one he doesn't say but we assuming that the prophet sallam wants this and we call it maskut So the Prophet ﷺ doesn't say, whoever created something from their religion, it will be accepted. He doesn't say this. But that's what the hadith means. Now it's clear? Any questions? Yes? So if it's from religion, how it how he was created? It's already there, right? I will tell you how. Like for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you to be dutiful to your parents, right? Does he ask you to kiss the head of your father? What if you do? For the sake of Allah. Uh, so it can be a way. A way I can say it's bid'ah, right? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's part of the religion or not? It's uh, part of being dutiful to your parents. Yes, but it's not for the part of the See? So if you created something can comes under the general rules of the Sharia. So be good. So you mentioned that. So you mentioned that some scholars disagree with the. Uh, this yeah, this is like if I go in, in this case, I, I will like I will take like two hours speaking. I will just give you like a small talk about this. Why the Hanafi Madhab they said it's not accepted. We said like each hadith, each saying actually, it has two meanings. Like if I ask you to bring me a cold cup of water, that means I will not accept a hot water. I don't need it. I need a cold. Yes. So two meanings. Yes. I want a cold water. Yeah. I don't want a hot water. Mm -hmm. That's what my like say my words means. Two things. So the hand method they said it's acceptable with like people saying, but with that with the. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala words and the Prophet sallallahu words, we should be careful. Why? Because there is a lot of ayat when this method doesn't work. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, min bihim. He said, you are not allowed to marry the lady or like actually the your daughter-in-law, if it's in your house, in your custody, and if you apply this rule, that will be like, if it's not in your custody, you are allowed to marry your daughter-in-law, which is no one said. It's not Allah, whether she's in your custody or not. But actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this because usually the daughter will be with her mother. So it's like how it's usually the things happen. So the Hanafi they said like, oh, if you if you if you say this rule will apply for everything, it doesn't apply here. A lot of hadiths, a lot of like even ayat. One one another ayat. فَلَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاحٌ أَن تَخْصُرُوا مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ إِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَنْ يَفْتِنِكُمْ الَّذِينَكُمْ So Allah subhanahu wa taala said you have you allowed to shorten the salah if you afraid of the fitna of the unbelievers and then sometimes like when you travel you don't even think about the fitna of the kuffar so why are you still shorting the salah because it's whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it's a part of the ruhsa it's a part of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to do so it doesn't mean like 
taking the other meaning, it will not be applied here. So the scholars, they, they said there are some rules to take the other meaning. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَفْ... Uh, ask us not to say off to our parents. But he doesn't say like, don't hit them. So is it okay? It's not okay. So that's why the scholars, they said, it shouldn't be like worse than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. So the Hanafi madhab, they said, we should be really careful about the ayat and the hadith. If someone say this to you, it means both meaning. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala words, it's a different story. We should be careful, we should take what they said, because we don't know. And they have the same example, like if I told you like to bring me a cold cup of water, they said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't say if you bring a heart, he will accept it or not. Who knows? Maybe I will say like, oh, whatever. So they said there is possibility and we can't risk our religion by taking possibilities. I really respect the, the opinion of the Hanif Madhab. Especially I, I, I see we don't need this as evidence, as a proof for anything in our religion. It's okay to think about it. It's very good. It's, we call it Nasta'ni Subih. Like we, we, we take it, we support the evidence with these things, but we will not take it as evident itself. But the majority of, of the scholars, they, they consider Mabhum al-Mukhalafa as evident, except the Hanafi, the Hanafi Usuri, which is not in Fiqh, this is in Usul. Anyone knows what the difference between Usul and Fiqh? What is Fiqh and what is Usul? Sheikh Amr. Yes, the usul, the usul, it means how to take the ahkam, the, the ahkam from the ayat, from the verses of Allah and the saying of the Prophet sallallahu how to conclude the rules of sharia. But the fiqh is the rule itself. So, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَةِ Establish prayer. You would say in fiqh, salah is wajib. It's obligatory. This is fiqh. But the usul part would say, oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command us. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to do something, it will be obligatory. So we know now in fiqh, the salah is obligatory upon us. So this is the difference between fiqh and usul. So we will go back to hadith. Yes. Which classification does this hadith uh, fall into? Is it a or or a hadith? This is this hadith, this hadith from the top of the Sahih hadith. It's not mutawatir, but it's Sahih. So Now, this hadith, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we fast, we go to Hajj, we go to Amr, right? Could you create something else like, let's do another ibad, let's create the ibad. Do circle and still like, spin this circle. It's not an ibad, you can't create something like this. Or we call it a hal. For example, you allowed to pray, but you say, let's go to the sun, and we pray under the sunlight, the sun beam. So it will be very hard to us, it's very good to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because it's hard. It's also bid'ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't ask you to beat yourself. And also to add something in sifat al-salat. 
which means to do to change something from the ibadah itself. The ibadah is there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to do it, but you change something. You say like, why we do like two sujood? I like, really like the sujood. I will do three sujood in each rakah. It's bid'ah. So you can create the ibadah. Or you can create a situation during the ibadah. Or you can add something to the ibadah itself. So any one of these is accepted. All of them is rejected. Because it's not from the religion. So sometimes they created like small things, but it can like blow the whole thing. Because it will be rejected, the ibadah is rejected. And by the way, the scholars they said the dangerous of bid'ah is the same with the sin. Like if you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with something is a bid'ah, your intention is like good. You want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they said it's the same, just like you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though the one who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his intention is really different. You want to obey Allah, he wants to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why they said it's the same? Any idea? Both of them, you follow your desire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He said the ibadat, the worshipping, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. And you are the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been said. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said for you to worship. Not on the way that you want to sit. So if you feel like, oh, it's, it's good to do this and you worship, it's not you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you want to follow your desire. And this is actually is very bad. That's why like following the bad way, going to the ma'asiyah, you follow your desire. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the bid'ah, Following your desire, it's the same thing. It's really the same thing. Because you are not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the way that He said to you. Now, all of us, we heard about bid'ah and bid'ah hasanah. So there is like a bad bid'ah and good bid'ah. Anyone heard about this? What do you think? Both, it's, I think it's bid'ah. It is, uh, so bad. what is bid'ah? To add something you know, new to himself. Innovation. Innovation. Or something new. That's what it means. In... So now, if you mean, because there is actually a saying, of Umar ibn al-Khattab, he said, Ni'mat al-Bid'ah, it's a good Bid'ah. And there is a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu said, Man sanna sunnatan hasana, whoever created something good in Islam. So, how you can put this hadith with this hadith that tells us that the Bid'ah is not allowed? Shaykh? Like, aren't you, from my understanding, you're allowed to, like, say, you can add things that are good and they're not necessarily bid'ah. They're just the extra thing like, I particularly... This is, this is one of them. Yeah, I particularly like to pray to salas when I get into my house. I, I don't know yes. if I can at the time, and I do it every day, or every Friday I pray <laughs> like 15 salas. Or yes, it's, 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 like it's absolutely. So first of all, the meaning of bid'ah, it means something in you. And as we said, not everything in you is bad so if it's in religion that's the bid'ah that we're talking about there is no bid'ah hasana in it 
You can't create it something in the religion. You can. It's religion. You can't. If it's in, from the religion, it's not a bid'ah. Oh, okay, so in, in the language, to say something in you, in Arabic, it's equal to bid'ah. So, if you get a new car, it's a bid'ah. Like, if, if you have a car that doesn't, like, stay on the ground, it can't fly. It's a bid'ah, it's something in you. Right? No one has it before you. You can create it. And we call it bid'ah. So it's good. But it's not from the religion. And if you in, like do something good in the religion, the definition of bid'ah in religion will not be applied to it. So, like, oh. so to say this is a bid'ah, this is a bid'ah in the religion, and you mean the bid'ah that it's created something from the religion will not apply to it because you created something from the religion, not from out the religion. So it's bid'ah. If you mean it from the language, it's a new something, it's a bid'ah. But if you want to apply this, because when, when the scholars of Sharia, they said bid'ah, that means created something from, not from the religion. So never like this can be good. Yeah, I mean. So there is two meanings of bid'ah. Yeah, right. One meaning it means in you, and anything in you can be good and bad. This is language. We don't talk about Sharia. When we talk about Sharia, this is the other meaning. The bid'ah in Sharia is created something not from the religion. There is no bid'ah hasana in this. Because you can't create it something good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't mention it. But for example, for the example when you say, like, for Ahmad, when you say, it's from the religion, it's not from out the religion. Yeah, it's from the religion and it's new. It's in you, but it's from the religion, so yeah. the definition of bid'ah will not apply to it. No, I mean, like, if you say bid'ah, just bid'ah, you understand that yeah. it's something that's not from the religion. So, so, that, so two meanings for the bid'ah. Two meanings. From the language perspective and from the Islam perspective, like Sharia perspective. So if you just mean the language, something in you, there is something in you which is good and there is something in you which is bad. So there is bid'ah hasana and bid'ah tsayya. But when the scholars talking about bid'ah, they exactly means that this something has been created in Islam not a part of it. There is no bid'ah hasana in it. You can't create it something not a part of Islam and it be good ever. So, okay, for example, we have a pray tarawih in the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Quran. There was Jama'ah. No, it was Jama'ah. No shit. That's why. That's why. That's why. Because you know, because the misunderstanding of bid'ah, there is a lot of debate in bid'ah and in sunnah, which is bid'ah, what is bid'ah, what is sunnah. I will give you a lot of example. One of these example that you mentioned. They said taraweeh is bid'ah. So the Prophet ﷺ prayed jama'ah in the masjid one day, two days. The third day, and the fourth, people, they gather in the masjid, the Prophet ﷺ doesn't show up. So when they asked the Prophet, he said, خَشِيْتُ أَن تُفْرَضَ عَلَيْكُمْ I afraid that if we continue, people will think it's obligatory. So on the time of Umar bin al-Khattab, he saw people praying, eat jama'ah alone. So he said, like, why are you doing this? At the time of the Prophet, you prayed all together. He said an imam, and start praying taraweeh. So, is that bid'ah? Of course not. Because the source of it, the so Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umar bin al-Khattab doesn't create something. In Ramadan, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to lead the salah for three days, and then he stopped for a reason. 
This reason does not exist in the time of Umar bin al-Khattab. So it's it's Sunnah, it's not Bira. This is the first thing. But uh, yeah. This is Shaykh, well, like if we go to these things. Uh, yeah. okay. That's why that's why like people they have a different things. Some some people they said about the same thing, this is bid'ah, and some people they said it's sunnah. Like for example, what is your opinion about visiting the graves for ladies? Yes. Um, because Aisha entered the house um, where uh, her husband, the Prophet ﷺ, was buried, mm -hmm. and Abu Bakr was buried. Yes. And then when Umar was buried, she put a hijab. Yes. So because she put a hijab and visited uh, where the she grave did, was. She didn't visit. Because well, she's, she was she's living, living there, but. <laughs> Uh, I, if, if I'm not mistaken from what I learned is that she put the hijab when she yes. went when Umar was yes. in the uh, the presence of Umar yes. uh, his, his grave so technically she visited no technically they visit her <laughs> okay because she's living there so when, I, when I'm saying like visiting the graves that means like leaving your house going to the grave yard visiting the graves and by the way, it's sunnah for men. This is confirmed in Sharia. Each scholar ask him about, is it sunnah? He would say it's sunnah. But if you ask about women visiting the graves, you will find some people they said it's bid'ah, and some people they said it's sunnah. And it's like, like a lot of difference between sunnah and bid'ah. So, now, we should know why they said this. First of all, at the early time of Islam, visiting the graves wasn't allowed. The Prophet ﷺ said, كُنْتُ نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْ زِيَارَةِ الْقُبُورِ أَلَا فَزُورُوهَا فَإِنَّهَا تُذَكِّرُ الْآخِرَةِ I used to ask you not to visit the graves. Now, you go and visit it. It's a good reminder for the Akhirah. This authentic hadith, they all agree about this. And then, the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned why. He said, it's a good reminder for Akhirah. And this, this reason applied for both men and women, right? Now we have another hadith. That the Prophet ﷺ, he said, لَعَنَ اللَّهُ زَوَّارَاتِ الْقُبُورِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursed those who visit the graves. Often, that's what the hadith mentioned, and this actually, from my understanding, is applied for the women who used to go to the graves to cry and like do a lot of bad things. So some of the scholars they said, the Prophet وسلم, said Allah subhanahu wa taala would curse them, so it's not allowed for women, it's allowed only for men. Some of them they said no. The Prophet ﷺ doesn't like mean this when 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 he said لَعَنَ اللَّهُ زَوَّارَاتِ الْقُبُورِ. What the Prophet ﷺ meant, he said, at the beginning of Islam, it wasn't allowed. This is confirmed. And if you go to do something bad, it's not allowed. Usually, the women they go there to like rape their like clothes or like I don't know. It said not beat themselves. Right? Or crying, screaming. There is some there is some women, it's their job in life. No, no, re really. It's their job. That's what they do for a living. They go to the graves. They get paid for it. Yeah, they get they get they get full time paid for it. Like they go to the graves and they should scream and cry and go to their house, do the same. And if you ask people like why you hire these people? They would say like, it's a janazah. Everyone should know like we are to heat it up. Care, care, caring oh, about our, our 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 father or our mother. So Subhanallah. So that's what the Prophet Sallallahu <laughs> mentioned or meant about this. So Subhanallah, we have to be careful about the hadith. So now, 
So now which, which part is, is right? Some people they said Sunnah, some people they said Spira Depending on the Hadith, how to understand the Hadith But what's confirmed the meaning actually That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Once went to the graveyard And he was followed by Aisha Radiallahu ta'ala So she went to the graveyard And this is in Medina Way after the early Hadith of like uh, prohibited of the woman from visiting the graves. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is a famous hadith actually also. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّمَا الصَّبْرُ عِنْدَ الصَّدْمَةِ الْأُولَى the, the patient is when, when you like first shock comes to you. This is the, he said this when he went to the graveyard and he saw a woman crying for her child. And she said, Isbiri, be patient. She said, you don't know him. And he left. And when she knows that the Prophet Sallallahu she went to him and she said, I'm patient. She said, no. You have to be patient with the first shock, not now. So she was there. The Prophet Sallallahu said, like, whoa, what, what are you doing here? Go there. Right? He didn't kick her out. And there is another hadith, authentic hadith that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha went to the graveyard to visit her brother and she was asked about this they said oh why are you visiting the graveyard is it Allah she said yes at the beginning of Islam it wasn't allowed but now it's allowed even though we have them, some scholars they still saying it's a bid'ah according to some hadith and there is some scholars they said it's Sunnah. So that's why I said like understanding the bid'ah and the Sunnah is the key. You see. And if you see this between the scholars, they will still respect each other. They will not say, but the problem is with, with the regular Muslims. They take a one word from a scholar, which is like if they said this a bid'ah, <laughs> If they say anyone, they will not even say this is following bid'ah. They said this is a kafir right away. He's followed this bid'ah and do this and this. Oh, leave him. This is a kafir. And like, really? How you can say this about your brother? At least you have to ask him. You have to see what is the reason. Maybe he doesn't know. Maybe it's a bid'ah, right bid'ah, but he doesn't know. So you should explain to him. You should even at the end make dua for him to return if he's doing something wrong but if there is another opinion it's allowed to follow it so Sheikh, you had a question yeah uh, so do you have an example for uh, something that was created and it was from the religion so uh, which is not bidah right yes if there is something and it's from religion it's not bidah right uh, so do you have an example? I'll just give you an example. Kissing the Kissing the Oh, yeah, yeah. Kissing the Right? So, so, so uh, for example, Osman Ma'afad said, Osman Ma'afad said, Osman Ma'afad said, Short in the sun. No, he made the second uh, to Azam for Juma because people were Yes, this is this is the one thing. Actually, sometimes do things according as I said, like understanding the bid'ah and sunnah is the key. Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan, he does even like more than this. Do you know in Hajj? The Prophet ﷺ, when he traveled to Mecca, he shortened the salah. He doesn't pray dhuhr four rakah, he prayed two rakah. So Uthman bin Affan, he prays four rakah in Mecca, in Hajj. And then Abdullah bin Mas'ud came to him and he said, like, I prayed after the Prophet ﷺ. And after Abu Bakr. And after Umar. And they all 
do the salat two rak'at. And you prayed it four. And he's like really argue with Uthman about this. And as we said, like Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is a really high scholar in Sharia. Faqih. But I want you to look how Abdullah ibn Mas'ud dealt with it and he, how he understand Uthman bin Affan. First of all, Uthman bin Affan, he doesn't do this because he said, I will change what the Prophet did. He thought that the Prophet did this because he's Muqim, he's a resident of al Madina, and then he traveled to Mecca. And then when he traveled to Mecca, he's a traveler. He allowed to shorten the Salah. Uthman bin Affan, he traveled to Mecca. He married to a Meccan woman. So he said, now I'm resident of Mecca. I'm not allowed to shorten the Salah. That's his thinking. Right or wrong, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows better. That's his opinion. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud doesn't agree. He said, like, you change something in Hajj that the Prophet doesn't do. So, when Uthman bin Affan do the Salah, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud followed him and prayed for Raka'ah after Uthman bin Affan. And then the other people, they came to Abdullah bin Mas'ud and they said like, he was complaining about him and you just followed his opinion. So he said very good words. I, I keep this word always in, in, in my ears. I think it's like really golden words. He said, al khilaf shar This agreement is an evil. If you especially have uh, a debate with the leader, even if you think he's following like not, not correct opinion, you should be with him. You can't say, oh, okay, I will leave you now. You separate the ummah, the nation. That's why he said al khilaf shar It's a really evil thing to do. So whether it's bid'ah or not, it's to Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala and to answer in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? You mean the two adhans for No, no, no. The, 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 adhan, the adhan is confirmed. But you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam add adhan to Salat al-Fajr, right? Why he added? You mean two adhan, right? So yes. To awaken the people? Yes, because they are <laughs> sleeping. They don't know about the Salat. And if you make adhan, they don't have enough time to prepare for Salat al-Fajr. So he made an extra adhan at the night so they will wake up, prepare, pray, hajjud until the adhan will come. So Uthman bin Affan, he thought like, okay, so people in market, they are sleeping more than the people in their beds. They are really sleepy. They, they, they focus on their trade. They, they don't care. So he just make a qiyas. Right? He doesn't do anything like he knew. He just followed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had an extra adhan to waken the sleepy people. He does the same. He just add an extra adhan to waken the, like, the wake people. <laughs> so it's, it's how he think about it. That's why I said like, to have a deep understanding in Sharia, it's the key. We are also talk like a lot more than. <laughs> Subhanallah. So, any questions? Okay, I have a lot of things I didn't mention yet. Maybe inshallah next. Jazakumullah khair. Barakallah khair. Maybe inshallah we'll take another hadith and we'll talk more about this. Jazakumullah khair. Barakallah khair.